Okay. Uh, basically, of course, I'm going to talk about the. I have a very short description of my talk. It's a brand new JavaScript SVG library for the modern web. This is probably the shortest, I mean, the longest description of my talk I ever had. I will talk about Snap SVG, which is kind of obvious. And I'm terribly jet lagged, so if I will fall asleep, wake me up. So, I jet lagged because I fly all the way from Sydney here, right? I actually live in Sydney. My name is Dmitry, and I work for Adobe, and I live in Sydney, and I'm Russian. So it's very complicated. <laughs> and uh, just to show off, the whole presentation is running in the browser. It's all written in the Snap SVG library for the reference. So it took me quite a while to get here over the Pacific Ocean. It happened to be big. And I hope it was you know, worth it, all this flight. So I just came here to speak with, uh, in front of you. So that should be important, right? So I'm uh, uh, kind of known as the uh, author of the Raphael, the JavaScript library for operating with SVG. Who have used Raphael? Oh my goodness. OK. So I wouldn't tell you what the Raphael is then. Uh, so Raphael is great library, and it's still great, even after a snap release. Uh, but it was re released in 2008. It feels like yesterday, but it actually in 2008, which is four years ago, which is for web, is a huge amount of time. And when it was released, it was the main goal for this for Raphael was to create library which works, give you ability to draw cross browser, and which means Raphael works in IE6. Actually, Raphael works in IE 5.5. If you care. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> well, nobody cared even when it was released in Dioxin IE 5.5. But back then it was important because IE 6 was still alive. It's still kind of kicking, but not as much. And back then that was, it wasn't a question of what you can do. It's a question, can you do anything? It was so easy to create demos for Raphael because you can just draw a circle and they say, look at circle in HTML and people are like, wow, it's circle in HTML. It's so cool. It's four, year, it's four years ago, guys. You should still remember this, but you're not. <laughs> because it's so easy to get used to cool new stuff, right? So like, yeah, WebGL, yeah, psh, 3D, psh, easy. Uh, circle. So like, I actually like this time. You know, you get people get excited because of a circle. Isn't it amazing? Like nowadays, it's so hard to make people excited. So, Raphael made things possible. So you can draw, you can write the command and it will draw you circle and it looks the same in IE6, in IE7, in IE8, in Chrome, Safari, whatever, whatever, whatever. And that was cool. And after a while, I started noticing that the community kind of divided into groups. You know, you could always divide people in two groups. That's, it always works. So you divide it in two groups. And one group was using Raphael for the cross-browser thing. So actually to make something work in IE and not IE browsers. And other half didn't care about IE. They just used Raphael for the SVG. Because it's much easier to operate with SVG using Raphael, because operating with SVG natively through the DOM is a pain. And they, this part of people always were demanding. I actually like how people demand something from the author of open source projects. It's like, Dimitri, do this, or I will never use Raphael anymore. <laughs> OK. Don't, do, don't use it anymore. <laughs> uh, there was one guy who was actually sending a very, very angry letter. He was sending me a huge pull request with uh, some suggestions. And I didn't like the suggestion. And he was like, this is not open source. I send you pull request. You should, you should accept it. You should put it in, because this is how open source works. I'm like, 
No, well, actually, open source means that you can read the code. That's all. Well, and you can, you know, send me a request, and I could accept it. That's it. Then it's, it's not democracy here. Sorry, it's dictatorship. And otherwise, it's, it's going to die. You know, like it's not going to work. Anyways, <coughs> so people demand changes. They demand to support more SVG, and. I cannot, well, for many reasons. But first, let's talk about why actually it's SVG. So when I created Raphael, and people ask me, so why did you choose SVG? Because there was SVG and there, was a, there were canvas, and I can choose any of them. It doesn't matter. Well, the reason why is because there is VML. In the, who knows what is VML? I share your pain. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of like SVG from Microsoft, but it's broken and it has terrible API and it's, has, it's very badly documented and documentation has bugs and all this stuff. So and VML looks very like SVG. So when I, I don't have a choice with the VML, so I have to use VML. So SVG was just the only option I have because it looks just like VML, but better. Uh, the benefits of SVG, I, when you start doing, working with SVG more, you're noticing that there are lots of benefits of SVG, like the fact that it's actually scalable, not like Canvas. Uh, the fact that it's, you could print the page and it looks awesome on the, on, 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 as a printed page, because it's, again, DPI independent. Uh, it, like, I build Raphael website and I put all the graphics on Raphael website as SVG, so it was the first website that was written already when Regina was released. And everybody was screaming around like, oh, my, my site is not ready for Regina. Are, si are your site ready for Regina? Regina, Regina that, Regina that. Like, what Regina? I open it on MacBook Pro. Yeah, it's ready for Regina. So it's all SVG. So SVG is great. But if you look at the features which have, which SVG has and VML has, then SVG has more features. VML has less features. And what Raphael do, it basically trying to, you know, work on intersection and make something possible at intersection. So if you look at this moon-shaped part of SVG, which is outside of intersection, that's something which I cannot put into Raphael without breaking the whole purpose of the library being cross-browser. And that's what people always demanding me to do. And I was actually willing to do it. And I was start writing the library, and I noticed that, I realized that I cannot use the same paradigm that Raphael was built on to build the library to support more of SVG features. Therefore, after quite hesitation, I just decided to create a completely new library. And here we go. So Snap SVG is not a competitor to Raphael, Maybe it's successor in some sort of way, but it's basically obviously heavily inspired by Raphael. Well, because it's written by the same person, I guess. Uh, so the tasks of, so if uh, the task of Raphael was creating cross-browser drawing, what actual task of Snap SVG then? Because it doesn't work cross-browser, doesn't work in IE6 or even 8. So what the point, right? Well, the main point is to make working with SVG easier and giving the ability to draw stuff easily. But it's not just, uh, in, in Raphael, you could only create stuff from inside of the code, from inside of your JavaScript code, basically. Uh, in Snap, you could do this, but you could also grab existing SVG files, put it into your page, and go through. And I think this is, big difference, and that's actually why, why, one of the reasons why I have to create the whole new library, because it's a completely different concept. So yeah, it's a JavaScript library for modern libraries. Yeah, let's, let's better show you some demos, because it's, it's, it's kind of boring. Okay, so, already, we already saw these demos on 
uh, Arnold's keynote, but I, I'll, I just like to emphasize it a bit. So it's it, it's nice example of uh, the fact that you have a picture drawn in Illustrator. It could be drawn anywhere, basically, but and then you could enhance this picture by uh, Snap SVG to make it interactive the way you want, without actually. We, if you have to uh, uh, approach the same problem with Raphael, you actually have to draw all the things inside the Raphael code, uh, inside the JavaScript code using Raphael, which is obviously will be a huge overkill. But now you could just grab whatever this data from the designer who have no idea about JavaScript, for example, and just enhance it the way you want. So let's just get a bit dirty with the code because it's Okay. So here I just create a small tutorial and go through, and I will try to walk you through. So uh, the beginning of the Snap API is that you have function Snap, and function Snap accept a couple of different uh, attributes, but one of them you just could specify the string, which is CSS selector, so it will grab the element from the page and will Snapify it. I just made up this word. So it just will wrap it, wrap it in, in Snap container and then you can do some stuff with it. Just, just like jQuery do, right? So you just wrap it. Uh, you could also pass here the DOM element itself from some sources somewhere from your code. Or you could just specify the dimensions like two numbers and then it will create new uh, SVG elements for you in the page. So here I already have this, uh, this uh, white uh, rectangle on the left is where the SVG and now I will just put there some code. So first we create a big circle and it's as simple as having the uh, surface object you just call the circle method with the uh, attributes x, y and radius and by default it creates black circle because this is SVG default so it has fill black and no stroke. It's kind of boring. It's cool looking circle but it's a bit boring one, so we could change the attributes of the circle. Just like in jQuery, you use the TTR method, you provide fill, stroke, stroke width, and it will change the circle. As you can see, for stroke width, for example, you could use the dash separated value, but then you could put quotes around, or you could just put the cap, uh, camel case uh, name for the, for the uh, attributes. It also works fine. Now we create small circle. Uh, just as cool as the big circle, but smaller. And then we create a group. This is important because in Raphael, for example, there are no group support. So here, when I create group, I could I pass in as the first argument the circle I just created, and as the second argument, I pass the similar circle I created a bit to the right. So I have this nice looking shape. Don't try to guess what I'm trying to draw because I know what you're thinking of. It, it's not what you're thinking of, just two circles. Now, be, because I have a group, I could change the attributes of the whole group, and I just change the feel of uh, circles to be white. Now we come to the interesting part. So now I grab the big circle, big circle and I change the mask of big circle to be equal to the group of two circles I just created, and this way I'm using the group as a mask on the big circle. If you ever done it in S pure SVG, you could guess how many lines of code I just saved. It's about 10, I guess, 20. Because I still have access to the small circle, I could animate it. So I could animate part of the mask. It's pretty cool. I, ha I don't have access to the second circle, but I can use the select method on the group to do the, the use a CSS selector to grab the second circle and animate it the same way as the first one to make them all shrink a bit. Now here, I actually go through and create a pattern. So for creating pattern, like you can use patterns in the SVG. I, I don't know, should I say about it? So you could create a pattern, so I just create here some 
path, put the stroke to be green, blah, 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 all the stuff. And then on this line, I actually convert this path into the pattern by just calling the pattern method and specifying the bounding box of the pattern. And then I just apply it to the big circle as a fill. And now my big circle is not green, but has a pattern inside. I can also, I can also grab the pattern from embed, which is embedded already somewhere on my uh, HTML page in some other SVG file. And I just, again, use the CSS selector to snappify the pattern and apply it as a fill. So now I have one pattern applied to the circle and one pattern applied to the mask. And that's why we have this nice, uh, uh, yeah. We have something on the screen, it doesn't matter. You could also use the gradients as a fill. So for example, for the disks, again, I specify here the gradient. This is a, I just invented this sort of string way of specifying gradients because I don't like CSS. It sucks. So I just, you know, why not, why, why I can't create my own, right? Uh, so uh, first letter means, uh, first letter says, it's, is it radial or linear? So it's radial in this case. Is it capital or small letter means, is it uh, absolute or relative gradient? So it's relative gradient in this case. And uh, I don't specify any arguments for the center or radius of gradient, just use default. And it's from white to black. And as you can see, we have like two gradients because they're relative. They apply to two circles relatively to their bounding boxes. We could use absolute gradient, and then they kind of share the same gradient among themselves. So it's a capital R, and then you specify what the center of the gradient will be, what the radius will be, and it, then they will share this. You could always animate the stroke color as well, not just the shapes of the not just radiuses and stuff. So here I'm actually loading the uh, SVG file, which is just laying down the file system near, next to my HTML. And when I load the file, uh, it's, calling, it's happening asynchronous, so I have a callback, and callback is called with a fragment. So when I load the SVG file, it's posted into the document fragment, which I get and then I could work with this fragment. So in this case, it's not, it's snappified fragment, right? So you can select through the fragment to find all the polygons which are green and change the field to lighter green. Uh, and then I grab the, all the group and I append the group to the, like here I append the group to my con, uh, ca canvas. And here I call the drag method which makes it draggable. In the drag method, I could specify the functions, the callback functions for move, start, and drop. But by default, they just make it draggable, so I can just drag it around. You know, like. So that's how basically simple it is to make it draggable. You could notice that I, when I say select polygon, it only grabbed me the first polygon here, which changes color. So I, I just need to make sure that I use select all to make select all the polygons which are green. And I could also add text, it's right here. It's actual SVG text. And when I add in text, I could also specify text as an array. It could be array of arrays of arrays of arrays of arrays of even more arrays. Uh, it basically will create the T-spans for each array element. So you could have nested uh, structure of T-spans. And then you could go grab the T-span you want and change the attributes. And here you go. It was very complicated to write. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, to make you clap your hands. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's the only thing I'm getting from for writing all this is, you know, like this applause is at the end of my speeches. So I'm sorry that I actually made you do this. <laughs> so the, the Coffee Maker demo is uh, also very significant because 
it was a good show of the workflow. So I work with uh, our designer who just draw it all in Illustrator and send me an SVG file. Actually, he sent me an AE file, right? So I export it as SVG. Uh, and uh, I knew what I want to move, what I don't want to move on the file, on the, on the page. So I just go through the IE file and put IDs on the elements I need to access later. And then when I, I open it up and just start writing the code to actually make it interactive. And it's like way more interactive than designer could make it. So you could, you could change to the different coffee types. It, proves it, it took me actually a while to make this animation of the cup. If you think it's simple, you, I just challenge you to do it yourself. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it requires some math and I hate math. No matter how I look, I, I actually hate math. And you could also drag this circle ar around, so you can you can choose different coffee types, and it applies animation to the coffee cup and to the uh, pie chart. And and if you really paying attention to details, you can see how a bit of steam coming out of the cup when it's pouring the water inside. So and, and you could close this lid, of course. Yes. So it, it's it's. It was actually quite easy, despite uh, the coffee cup was kind of complicated part to make the animation, but the rest was kind of easy because I already have everything done on the page. I don't need to draw anything. So that's a nice workflow when you work with a designer and design just give you the vector file and you just make it interactive. And you are free to make it as, as much as you want. And it's being, being vector again, it's, it's all like, uh, you know, very, very much scalable and it doesn't matter what size it is, it still kind of works, which is kind of cool. So, that's pretty much it actually. So, what I want to point before I wrap up, there are obviously questions asking like, okay, so what the relationship between Snap, SVG, and Raphael, and D3, and SVG GS. Okay, so I'm answering one by one. So with Raphael, it's a very simple relationship. It's not Raphael. And it's not competes with Raphael because Raphael is cross browser application. If you need to support IE8, you have no choice, unfortunately, or fortunately, you have to use Raphael. Snap wouldn't help you. With D3, Okay, next time somebody asks me about D3, I will punch him in the face. <laughs> because it's just, it's just insulting. D3 is visualization library. Not even SVG visualization library. It's visualization library to create data visualization. Snap, SVG, or Raphael are not data visualization libraries what the relationship between them. There are no relationship between them. Why I didn't use D3? Because it's a completely different library for a completely different purpose. So please don't ask me this question. I get angry. <laughs> now, SVGGS, it's another library which exists at the moment, which actually competes with Snap SVG. And I, I read some tweets and people asking, like, so why you didn't want to, you should just contribute to SVGGS and, and make it better. I actually agree, and that's what I did in the beginning. I was decided, oh, there is SVGGS. I should just contribute. So I opened the code. The guy doesn't use semicolons and use comma first syntax. Now, I'm not a JavaScript hipster, so I can't code like that. So I just didn't contribute. So next time when you're writing your code without semicolons, just consider that some people just don't want to contribute to your code because of that. <laughs> if, you know, if reasonable arguments is not good for you, just use this argument at least. Uh, and also some guy actually wrote that OSVGGS was, he, was there before, so I will use it. Well, I don't care what you're gonna use, but the thing is, 
I was there before SVGGS, so I don't care. Uh, now, the SV, uh, Snap SVG is built as a set of files. Basically, there is one file SVGGS. What, what a unique name. Uh, and it's just a core functionality. Everything else, animation, supporting for sets, supporting for filters, supporting for everything else, pretty much. It's all added as a plugins. And uh, when you grant the grant, it just generate it all together as a big, one big file. So basically, if you think it's too big, you could, at the moment, you have to go to the grant file and change the grant files, and you could build custom build which only have features you want and don't have features you don't and make your file smaller. Uh, as a to-do task, we have to actually make it maybe available on the site, like you could choose whatever build you want. Well, it's in the, in the future. Uh, please also know that this is initial release and don't say like, oh, it has bugs. Of course it has bugs. It's the first release. I know it has bugs. I don't know exactly what bugs, of course, because it, otherwise I would fix them. But I know it probably has some bugs. And, you know, it's okay, I guess. Uh, I'll fix the bugs, raise the bugs. I actually would love to see you raising the bugs. Even more than raising the bugs, of course, I would love you to send pull requests. But please put semicolons in your code. And basically, you know, now you have no excuses for not creating some awesome shit. So go out there and do it. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can ask me, but be polite. There are microphones. Hi, this Hello. is awesome, thanks. Um, I, I've been in this conference alone, I've uh, seen three talks, uh, which have basically been like, I was drawing a thousand circles in SVG, and then it didn't work out because the browser performance sucks, and uh, then we had to switch to Canvas. So, and I want to use SVG, so what do you think would be a reasonable limit? What, what should we reach for, uh, for the performance in SVG? If you have to draw a thousand circles, you have to, if you draw, if you have to animate thousand divs, then it will, you know, it will be slow. And if you need to animate thousand circles, then SVG is not your tools of choice. Then you should use Canvas. I'm not, that's another, like, I don't like when people saying, oh, Canvas is faster than SVG. This is bullshit. Or oh, SVG is so much better than Canvas. This is another. It's bullshit from profile. It's, a, it's the same thing. It's different tools, different technologies for different jobs and different tasks. It's kind of obvious, and I, I, I feel stupid just saying that. But if you have thousand elements moving on the page all around, then yes, SVG is not probably gonna perform well. But if you have, let's say, some map, which you have to click through and drag around, and you have to, then maybe SVG could be a better choice than canvas. Oh, or horror, you could combine them together and use, you know, as canvas for background, SVG for foreground and stuff like that. It's like, you don't have to choose a camp. Yep. Just, you know, be professional, be, you know, cool, like me. Right. <laughs> thanks. Just don't be as jet lag, because that sucks. Any other questions? Come close, I can't hear it from. <laughs> Since you mentioned that Raphael and uh, Snap SVG. Yeah. You could pull, you could pull it Is up. Is it clear? Yeah. You could okay. pull it up, you could pull it up. No, all in down. I'll test my backbone. Okay. <laughs> Since you said these two are not competing frameworks, uh, are they pretty much interoperable? Raphael JS and Snap SVG? Well, they're not competing because they're solving different, they're conceptually solving different problems. But if they're solving the same problem for you, 
they could be competing for you. Right. And in this case, I would obviously suggest you to switch to Snap. Because, well, Snap covers more functionality in SVG than Raphael is for reasons I just talked about. Okay. And let's say, imagine a scenario where I happen to have a huge application and I cannot switch uh, almost immediately. Will it be okay if I have both libraries in my application? It's and up to you to decide. Is it okay? It's okay, okay. with me. Okay. So I just want there'll be no, there'll be no conflicts and stuff like no, that. No, no conflict. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Any daredevils? Oh, you, you just understood everything I just said, right? So you just, it's all easy. Yeah, there's Mike here. Will, will you be working on Raphael in the future or is it more like a dead end and now it's all gonna, gonna focus more on Snap? No, y yes, I will work on Raphael. In fact, uh, I'm pretty sure that I, if I find some bugs in Raphael, and they probably, some of them I actually repeat it in, in Snap because, well, it, I developed by the same person again. Well, I will fix them all around the place. So if there will be similar bugs, I will try to fix them in both places. So I will, I will not stop working on, on Raphael, but obviously my focus will be shifted to Snap more than to Raphael. Because, well, the problem, oh, not the problem, but the thing is, Raphael is pretty much complete. There is nothing new I really want to add. It's just mostly polishing and bug fixing, but it's also very mature as well. So it's, it's like, it's like well done project at the moment. Uh, there are bugs, there are some, but well, Windows has bugs, come on. That's much bigger problem, I guess. So. It, yeah, I, I will still be working on it. I, 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 I'm not abandoning it. I still, I still love it. I have a long time relationship with Raphael. Oh, I forgot about you. <laughs> just a moment. Time. Just wait, wait, wait. Okay. So the, the Miguel is from PBS Kids. And they were the first who actually used Snap SVG in production for their homepage, actually. And they're creating some very cool stuff with uh, SVG. And Miguel is actually looking for some, he's doing some head hunting here. <laughs> so if you think that doing something cool with SVG is your dream job, you should come and talk to Miguel. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I had a, also a clarifying it's question slash answer for the gentleman earlier about mixing libraries and all that. Uh, when we were using SVG, uh, um, Snap, uh, we used it with jQuery. Um, and, just use the selectors, it was easier for me to change class names within the, the Snap callbacks. So if anyone's thinking, like, how does this thing integrate with other libraries, think of the way you use jQuery with other libraries. It's just, it's selector-based. It sits on the DOM, so you can mix all kinds of libraries. So I'm assuming with Raphael and stuff like that, there really isn't that conflict. So it was kind of like a clarifying thing. It was really easy to use in that regard. And I'm sure Dimitri can expand on that. Yeah, you should use the right tool for the right job. So don't, don't switch, I don't know. Don't call switch to snap and just, I, I, I knew the friend who was, you know, writing text in Excel just because he likes Excel, but I think it's a bit of uh, overkill. Don't be like that, just in general. Any other questions? Why I didn't choose TypeScript? Why it's not CoffeeScript? I have answers right here. <laughs> So I, I like the, the demo with the, uh, just getting, the idea of getting the design from the designer is great. Just bringing that in and interacting with it. Um, where do you, how do you do animation? Like, I'm used to having a designer do the animation as well. Obviously you're gonna be coding a lot once you get it in there. Any integration with Flash or any integration with like keyframes or anything like that? Yes. Well, I don't know. I don't even know, can I talk about this? Or how can I talk about it? So basically, because uh, I actually work for Adobe, as you know, so we have a plans to have an integration with Flash, with existing Flash, and with Edge Animate. But that's pretty much as much as I can tell you. This, did, I say, did I say too much? <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Do you like the filters API? 
You mean general? So the filters API and filters in, uh, in, in SVG and in, in, in Snap. So at the moment, I was trying to recreate the filters API in, uh, in JavaScript. So you can create like this filter, apply to this filter, change this value. And then I find out that I'm just recreating the SVG in JavaScript and I feel stupid. And uh, currently in Snap to create filter, you just pass in the SVG like a, a string, a SVG string of a filter. And that's it. It could be as complicated as you want because I assume if you want to create a filter, it's kind of stupid to hold this inside the uh, JavaScript code. It, rather, you could just use it as external filter. And if you have to, you can. You can just put it as a string because you probably will copy paste it from SVG anyways. Or if you actually such a, you know, a, Extensional masochist, and you want to write it all by hands and in your JavaScript code, then just write it in SVG. Why you need to learn yet another syntax? Because it's it's really complicated the filters, or maybe just because I'm dumb and I don't really understand them fully. But I decide not to go with API by now, at least. Maybe I, you know, it's a very young project. It's like one day old, almost one day old. Okay, any more questions? No? Well, thank you one more time. Go create something awesome. Thank you.